What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, got an awesome unboxing here. Some incredible books, especially in this one right here. Plus, I've got a tip for how you can sometimes get some pretty good deals on auctions. So stay tuned. Right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I have got some awesome books in this unboxing. I've got uh, this one. It's a bunch of books I picked up from Alex the Comic Hoarder. I've got some raw books that I already had opened as part of uh, some other boxes that I got, but I didn't show them on video, so I'm going to talk about those. Then I've got this one here, which this is a really light box but it's really big. It's from Heritage and that is always a good sign because it means it is something that they put a lot of packaging around. So this, this is an incredible book. Really excited about that one. Almost certain that one's going on the keeper list. But like I said, I've got some raw books in here and a couple of those, at least two, maybe three are gonna be going to get graded at CGC. And whenever I'm gonna get a book graded, I'm almost always going to get it pressed and cleaned first. So that's where we're gonna talk about the sponsor of this video, the comic book presser. He's the one that I am definitely going to be sending these books off to before they get sent to CGC. If you've watched my CGC unboxings on this channel, almost all of those books were pressed and cleaned by the comic book presser before getting graded by CGC. He does incredible work on all kinds of books. I've had him press Golden Age books from 1940 all the way up to Moderns from 2020, Silver Age magazines, and everything in between. He has very reasonable prices and is also a CGC certified dealer and will pass his savings on to you if you have him submit your books through him. If you're looking to get some books pressed and clean, make sure to check him out on Instagram and through his website. His contact information is in the details of this video. All right, we're back. So let's check out the books that are in these boxes. I think I'm going to start with a couple of the raw ones. So, because uh, I actually have, I think this is actually Bronze Age. I don't think it's Silver Age. Uh, I think this is Bronze Age at this point. But uh, first one here, awesome cover. I don't know if I've ever owned this. Maybe I've owned it one other time. Uh, this is Fantastic Four number 112. This is a classic Hulk versus Thing battle cover. Uh, it's done by John Buscema. He did a lot of those great battle covers. Uh, this one is actually a very, very nice presenting copy, but um, I'll show kind of the, the main issue with it. And it's that it has a subscription crease. And so if you're ever wondering what a subscription crease is, you know, it's that. You know, if people talk about that, it's that line right up the middle that goes all the way up the middle. And Sometimes they're worse than others. Generally about the highest grade you're gonna get with a subscription crease is a five, five, maybe a six. I think I've seen a 6.5 before. Um, and this one is very light. It doesn't actually break color the full way. It, uh, it would probably improve quite a bit from a press. I am considering this one for pressing and, uh, and grading because I think that the crease is so minor on it uh, that I, I think it could get up into that five, five or six range. Because uh, it is a really solid presenting. I mean, super glossy cover, pretty nice spine. It just has that that crease, you know, going up the middle, which always always sucks to see that. Now, the term subscription crease is used generally for those creases up the middle, but it doesn't always mean that it was actually a subscription crease. Uh, there were these books that were sent on a subscription, someone to subscribe, and they would be folded and put in these envelopes, and so they'd end up with these creases up the middle. And so that's just become a, a general term that's used for for those creases up the center, but it could be just somebody that folded it and put it in their pocket, something like that. Uh, then I also picked up this book here. This is, there's no number on the cover. Uh, this is Rawhide Kid number one, which is the first appearance of Rawhide Kid. And this book, for some reason unknown to me, has been going up quite a bit lately. I don't know if there's, there's a reason for that or if people are just, you know, high on Westerns or something like that, but it was a great price. It's a lower grade book, you know, like a 2.0 or something like that, but I decided to pick it up. It's a good price and, you know, first appearance. Um, but this is from Atlas. So I can see that up here. Atlas is what Marvel was before it was Marvel. It went Timely, then Atlas, then Marvel. And this is a an Atlas title. So Rawhide Kid number one. And now I'm going to jump over to the books that I picked up from Alex. Now this one... The post office was a little rough uh, with this box. Like I saw that when I picked it up and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> like, 
Uh, but you know, these books are all generally lower grade anyway. So I'm like, yeah, it's probably not, you know, didn't do any real damage to the books and everything looks like it's, you know, always packed well. And so I'm sure it's fine, but man, you just, you always wonder like what they have to do to, to put that amount of damage into, uh, into one of these boxes. Um, but yeah, get this thing open and then we'll show these books. 2000 years later. All right back everything was packaged really well uh threw in an extra book so we'll, we'll check that one out at the end um but uh you can see a pretty big stack of books that i picked up so alex had reached out to me he was asking about uh, pricing on a book and i was like i would be interested in that book <laughs> and uh um and then he said he was looking to sell a number of other books if you saw he did a um like a, a claim sale i think on youtube a few days ago. I meant to watch it and I just, I got distracted that day. And so I didn't get to, um, but so I bought a number of books from him, uh, that he had going up for sale and there's some awesome stuff in here. I'm really excited about these. There's a, at least a couple that I'm, I'm going to be planning on setting in to get graded, maybe more than a couple. So we'll just start from the top. First one here. And, and a lot of these, like I said, are, are generally lower grade books. The first one here is Startling Comics number 41. I believe this is a Schomburg cover. Um, the main, I mean, there's there's a variety of issues. It's got a, a pretty big tear right here. I think if I remember, it's detached at the front cover, but it's attached at the back, but barely, like the type of thing where it's probably gonna get detached, even though I kind of want to get it graded um, and it will probably get detached during grading, but I don't know. Cool World War II era cover. You know, you've got Pyro Man. That's the name of this character holding the uh, atomic bomb. Awesome cover. Uh, like I said, definitely a lower grade book, but presents really, really well, which is a big plus for this one. Um, then we've got uh, the Black Terror, number 27. This is actually the last issue from the run. This is the, I think, the nicest book out of all of them. Somewhere around maybe remember like a 4-0 something like that and potentially could clean up to be a little bit better than that uh but i again i don't really remember i think the back cover was really dirty um but uh actually let's let's take a look at that because that other one i don't want to i don't want to handle too much i'm worried about you know detaching the cover but this one i remember was was in pretty solid shape so you can see it out of the out of the bag you know nice and glossy but the back cover just had you know, a lot of dirt on it, but it could really, you know, clean up. I think, you know, the, the main issues are probably, it's hard to get it to focus on the spine, but the main issues are, there's some roughness on the spine, um, but with a, you know, with a good cleaning on the back to get rid of all this, you can see all that dirt on there. A book that has definitely not been cleaned. Uh, this one could potentially do, you know, fairly well um, with respect to grading. So, um, but yeah, black tear. I always... <laughs> I always get a kick out of this character. I've talked about it before um, because he's a he's a hero, but he totally looks like a villain. Um, you know, he's got on, uh, he's got the you know the all black costume. He's got the skull and crossbones type, type of thing like on the front of it. Like you would think this guy is a villain, but he is actually uh, one of the the heroes from that era that that you know was actually pretty popular at the time. One of those one of those types of heroes that you know, you just don't, they, they didn't make it through to the, uh, the modern times. Um, but yeah, they were real popular back then. So yeah, Black Terror number 27, nice copy. Uh, then some, next up, some pretty cool ones. This one is Famous Funnies number 212. Actually a really solid presenting copy, attached to both staples, but the mice got down to this, uh, this corner down here. Now this, this one I'm definitely gonna get graded and it'll be interesting to see what that comes back as because I've gotten some pretty decent grades with Mouse Chew. I think it could maybe get in, you know, like a two, maybe it gets a two five or something just because the rest of the book looks very, very presentable. Um, this is one that we could be definitely comfortable handling this one as well. Um, but this is from that, that Frank Frazetta Famous Funnies run. I talk about that one all the time if you're if you're a fan of this channel if you watch this channel and frank rosetta did the covers for 209 through 216 of famous funnies and they are very desirable books you can see like if we just if we just ignore that bottom part really solid solid copy this is just a printer crease that's up here 
But then you, you lift it up a little more and you can see there's that, that mouse chew down along the spine down there. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, it's un, it's unfortunate that the, the mice got to this one because it's a really, really solid book. And like I said, attachable staples and everything. But yeah, I mean, the, the missing paper and all that down at that bottom corner are definitely going to hurt the grade on the book quite a bit. But it'll be interesting to see what it comes back as. But yeah, definitely one that I am going to be getting graded and just because I want it to look as good as possible when it goes to grading, one that I'm, I'm going to get pressed and cleaned first before it gets sent off to CGC. Like I said, those will go to uh, the comic book presser. All right, next one from a run that I'm always looking for books from this run. This one is incomplete. It's missing the centerfold, I believe, but still has decent value regardless. This is Marvel Mystery Comics number 68. And I don't really know what's going on on this cover here. I mean, you've got the, you know, there's the woman tied up back in this corner here. You've got this, you know, I don't know who that is, like a butler or something like that tied up on the wall here that they're going to drive this little tank drill through. But, you know, Human Torch coming in to save the day and Toro down here. And yeah, missing the centerfold, so it's a 0.5. There's nothing you can do about that. It is guaranteed a 0.5. But for somebody that's looking for a run filler or something like that from Marvel Mystery or just want to get into one of these earlier Golden Age books and want something that's a little more affordable, this is a, is a great option. So Marvel Mystery number 68. Yeah, why don't we show the, uh, the interiors for this one? And you can see, like, it's like it would benefit from a press just because of all the denting and stuff on the cover. But there's no real point if you were going to get it graded because... It's gonna get a 0.5 anyway. Um, so this would be one as an example that I might just send in if I wanted to without it getting pressed, but I'm probably not even gonna get this one graded. But uh, you can see the, there's the opening splash page. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, missing the centerfold, so, so it's a 0.5. Again, nothing that you can do about that. All right. Now we've got one more book and then here and then this, uh, this throw-in book, and then I've got that big box, and then one more book, a bunch of bo books in this one. This is a cool World War II era cover. This is Black Terror number 10. Again, a lower grade copy. I think it's detached, but I don't remember for sure. Um, but you've got the, you know, the, the Nazi flamethrower cover there. You've got Black Terror, and I don't remember the name of his sidekick, uh, but his sidekick down here, you know, also beating up some Nazis. You've got some soldiers there beating up Nazis. You got you had everything going on on this cover. This is a this is a cool one. And you've got the little ad down here to you know buy wars uh, war stamps and bonds. So yeah, Black Terror number ten, great great World War II era cover. Um, again, I don't remember if this is a Schomburg, but I think it is. I think he did a number of these. And so uh, yeah, cool cover, Black Terror number ten. All right, now let's check out the. Uh, the throw-in book here. It said here. So it says here are some extras you may enjoy. All right. So <laughs> this first one, I'm gonna have to censor it a little bit. Uh, I can't totally show that on uh, on here. Uh, but the second one here, this is awesome. So uh, this is looks like a print of Luana, which she is on the cover of. I think it's. Vampirella number 31, which is a Frazetta cover. And it's almost the this, this same image, but yeah, that's really cool. And so yeah, thank you for that, Alex. And then the other one I'm gonna censor a little bit. It's this, <laughs> which is uh, Frazetta number one. And uh, Frank Frazetta, you know, he definitely has some art out there that is uh, not safe for work. So, and this this cover is one of them, but but yeah, no, this is, this is awesome. Awesome free throw in books uh, from, from Alex. I'll definitely check these out. And, uh, but yeah, that's really cool. Actually, let's, let's see if there's some, some images in here that, that I don't need to censor uh, that I can maybe show. Uh, but <laughs> nope. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> some of the, let's see, I think, uh, I think here's some, so here's some, some like interior artwork. But yeah, so here's some of the interior artwork. Uh, I will definitely filter this out later if I find something on there that I can't show. 
Um, but uh, it's done here because the front and back cover both have uh, images that I can't show on here. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, that is that's awesome. Uh, Alex knows that I'm a I'm a big Frank Frazetta fan, and um, but yeah, Frazetta definitely, like I said, has some some not safe for work art, and so <laughs> that's one of the things that's kind of funny. I always. I often use, like, after a heritage auction, they send these big books of all the books, and I use that after the auction for, like, packing material because I feel bad throwing them out. And I always have to make sure I check every page because a lot of times there's art, like Frazetta art in there, where it's there's nudity on it, and I don't want to be shipping that out to people. Um, so now, before I get into that big book, I'm going to talk about the method, one of the methods I used to find some deals at auctions, and it was to pick up this. So this is Tales from the Crypt number 40. This is an amazing Jack Davis cover. And so what I'm talking about was this book was up there. Uh, when I picked this up, this was up at a, as a 4.5. And when I took a close look at this book, I was like, there is no way this book is a 4.5. When I was looking at the images and that's where knowing how to grade, you can really find some deals, especially at auctions, because a lot of people are going to bid based on the grade that the book is advertised as. And so I talked about that when I picked up a Tales from the Crypt 33. It was advertised as a 5.5 on Heritage. I was like, that book is not a 5.5. I bought it, got it graded, came back a 7.5. And so if you really, you know, teach yourself how to grade, you can find books that don't align with the advertised grade. And then most people will bid based on the grade and you might be able to, you know, snag a deal. Even if you have to pay a little more than what that, that advertised grade would be, if you can get that book and it's actually like a 6 or a 6.5 or something like that, then, uh, then you, you know, can do pretty well on it. And so this one, like I said, was advertised as a five or a 4.5. And after I've taken a close look at it, I think five, five to a six, maybe it does a little better. I don't think it can get to a six, five, but I think a five, five to a six is pretty much guaranteed. And, you know, nothing's guaranteed. You know, anything can happen, but can get damaged, all that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, really stunning colors and everything on this one. You can see it's got that spine wear, and I think there's a, cre a small crease on the back. Yeah, and so the, the main flaw really on this one, other than that little bit of spine wear down in that corner, you've got those two little creases, and that's it. I mean, this is a this is an amazing copy. I mean, unless I have really missed something, which I don't think I have, uh, this book is not a not a 4.5. And uh, so that's what I said. I've got this one at a 5.5 five to a six. Maybe I have an outside chance at a 6.5, but it's an amazing presenting copy. It's just has the colors are just incredible on this one. I love this Jack Davis cover, but yeah, awesome, awesome copy of this book. So Tales from Crypt 40, this was actually used in the Senate hearings. So that's the other kind of like claim to fame for this book. All right, now let's get down to this final book here. Now, this, this is a big one. <clears throat> so like I said, this is one book that is in this uh, very large box, and it's because it's a pretty pricey book. And so I found that, you know, when that happens, they tend to ship them a little more cautiously. I mean, they, Heritage is usually pretty good about shipping anyway. Oh, yeah. So they even they even double box this one. So we have this this large box and then inside of it, we have got another box. So. If you watch one of my earlier videos, I got a couple packages that seemed like they were shipped very poorly from Heritage. And so I thought, I was like, hopefully this is just, you know, something because of the holidays and they're in a rush. Because normally I am really, really impressed with their packaging. And it seems like we are back to that. Because this is, I mean, this is definitely, I mean, like even overkill for this. A few moments later. We've got, we had packing peanuts in there, double box. We've got bubble wrap all around this thing. I mean, if this book is damaged, it's it's not because of the packaging. All right, get rid of the invoice, all that stuff. Here we go. I have talked about this book on the channel before. It was in one of my, um, it was in one of my videos where I was talking about very rare books, and that you might not think right away when you see this and you go, "Oh, Star Wars one and seven oh, that's not rare at all." Then look at the price. This is the 35 cent price variant. This is, and I know some people don't like the fact that price variants sell for more, newsstands or Mark Jewelers, all that. This is the most expensive by grade 
Bronze Age book. A 9.4 sold for, I believe, $54,000 a couple months ago. Uh, that crushes anything else, you know, Hulk 181, in grade, Hulk 181, Giant Size X-Men 1, uh, Marvel Spotlight 5, none of those even come close to that type of price in grade. Uh, I believe the highest grade out there is a 9.6. There are no 9.8s, um, but this is 7.0. I mean, just having one in any grade is is awesome. I have wanted to be able to pick up a copy of a book, this book in any grade for quite a while. I'm a big Star Wars fan, and I like rarity. You know, I've been, I've been kind of down on the bronze and silver stuff for a while now. I've been really going after Golden Age stuff, but I really like rarity, and... Uh, so the 35 cent variant of Star Wars number one is definitely rare. Now there are multiple types of 35 cent books. So you have to be aware that this is the, the main one that, that you want. There are ones where they'll have like a diamond, that kind of thing. There are reprints. Those ones don't carry this value. It's this specific one. And, uh, yeah, so a 7.0 white pages, you know, looks like a, a solid presenting 7.0. I'd say it's a 7.0. I, I wouldn't say that I think it could get up to a 7.5. I mean, it's got some little like wrinkles up here. It's like, you know, maybe you could try pressing, but I think this corner is really going to hold it back. You know, you've got enough of these, this little bit of damage on in that corner that I don't see it doing much better than a seven. Now, half a grade in this book can be a huge, huge deal. I mean, I think this book last year at its peak sold for almost $10,000 in grade. Um, it has come down a little bit since then, more than a little bit, but it has come down since then. And, uh, but that's why I decided to pick it up because this is one of those books that just tends to gradually go up long-term and I love to have a copy of a book like this. So yeah, I've been trying to decide if I want this one on my keeper list, if it's going to stay on my keeper list or not. It's such an expensive book that I don't know yet. Um, but it's, I'm considering it. I'm definitely considering it, but yeah, so this was my... Uh, my real big purchase recently, this uh, Star Wars number one, 35 cent variant, 7.0. Really happy about it. And uh, yeah, some awesome books in this one. Some super rare stuff, like especially this. I think there's only around, I don't remember what it is, 300 graded, something like that, compared to I think about 15,000, I think is around the number, or 12,000 for the, the standard 30 cent variant. Um, but, but yeah, oh, that's right. If you're not familiar with these price variants, basically what it was, was they were testing out a higher price and they just did it in a small set of markets. And so that's why, you know, it's just a few cities and that's why there's so very few of these that are out there. Uh, they, they also had it for issue two and issue three. Those are also worth quite a bit, but not as much as issue one. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to see more content like this got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos, the subscription button is right around here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.